what is going on YouTube so coming back today with my Wisconsin Badgers preview a team that went 10 and 3 overall last year uh, just missed the Big Ten championship game in a four-point loss to Iowa last year so trying to get back to the Big Ten championship game where they were in 2014 obviously got railed there by Ohio State and that 59 point loss if any of y'all remember that I'm assuming most y'all do um coming back this year with again a very new team uh they lose their quarterback for what seems like a decade now Joel Stave so it's time to move on from him and then also they have a little bit to replace in the way of their secondary and their uh, linebackers they lose their best linebacker and Joshua Bear as well so Let's go ahead and get into the first of my three key players. And the first one I have is Corey Clement. So, expected to be a star last year. You know, the re, some said reincarnation of Melvin Gordon or just the next breakout star in the Big Ten. And injuries kind of derailed his season last year. Um, what was actually a pretty good backfield for Wisconsin last year has kind of threatened his starting position. Uh, Dare... Ogunbowale, I think that's correct, is a guy that I think is ready as anyone to take over that starting spot and definitely could. Uh, had a good season last year, and I don't think Wisconsin's offense would really miss too much of a beat if he started. But I mentioned this in my previews. I think Corey Clement will be a tremendous player this year, and I think this will be his breakout season he was supposed to have last year. So my second key player is Bart Houston. Uh, presumed starting quarterback for Wisconsin. Him and Alex Hornibrook are in the competition right now for the starting quarterback for next year. As I mentioned before, Joel Stave will be gone from Wisconsin's quarterback spot. And this is a team that will need an improved passing attack. I'll get more into that later in the video. But Bart Houston coming back as a redshirt senior. Um, kind of a bigger guy. Definitely has a decent arm. And... I think he could have a good year if uh, Wisconsin's wide receiving core gives them the support that I think they'll need. Jazz Peavy and Robert Wheelwright, I believe, will be the starting uh, starting to a wide receiver for Wisconsin. He'll probably most likely have a running game to work with, so if he's, if he's solid, then Wisconsin's offense should have a very nice balanced, uh, balanced attack. So my third key player is Chiqua, Chiqua Obasi. Maybe the most experienced player along Wisconsin's defensive line. Um, this will be a very new-look defensive line for Wisconsin. Um, after losing Arthur Goldberg, he um, was, I believe he was dismissed from the program in March. Uh, but the, he will be starting alongside Jeremy Patterson, Connor Sheehy most likely. Um, Sheehy a returning starter. And uh, what will be a different-looking a different looking linebacking core. As I mentioned earlier, Joe schobert has gone. And it's up to I would say Jack C or is Jack Cici to be able to replace him. Cici was a very good linebacker last year, proved his versatility pretty well. And a name to watch out for also TJ Watt, JJ's little brother, um, at the outside linebacker spot. So get into my two X factors. First one is replacing the secondary and Mainly at the safety spot, they do lose quite a bit. They lose maybe their heart and soul in the secondary with Tanner McAvoy, the con old converted quarterback. But I do have a faith in a few of their players in the secondary. Dakota Dixon um, should step into the strong safety spot with no problem. Leo Musso, uh, fifth-year guy returning, so he's got some experience there as well. And then I think a big player to watch out for in the secondary, Derek Tindall, should be um, should be a good leader at cornerback for them as well. So if they can, it's not really improving the secondary as much as it is just replacing it. Their secondary was pretty good last year. They might have had the best duo of safeties in the Big Ten. But it's avoiding too much regression that's going to be the big thing for Wisconsin. They had a pretty good defense last year. And again, I think it's up to guys like Dick Dakota Dix and Derek Tindall to be able to, you know, take some of the burden on their shoulders and lead this team in the right direction. So my second key, or my second X factor for Wisconsin is an improved passing game. Stave was 
I, I, you know, it was hard to tell. You know, he wasn't ever a tremendous quarterback for Wisconsin, but he was also a smart quarterback last year as well. I mentioned before Bart Houston is most likely the starter. If he wanted to go with a long-term option, Alex Hornibrook would be the guy only going to be a sophomore, but Bart Houston the more experienced. I'd say guy with the edge to start right now. So, again, Joel Stavi, a guy that seemed like he was a 200-yard, two-touchdown-per-game max sort of quarterback, and I think they're going to need to improve that a little bit, make the passing game a little bit more of a threat. I know that's never been... Um, something of Wisconsin's doing, but I think having a little bit more of an effective pass game will be a big key to them being able to win uh, the Big Ten West this year. So get into my trap game for Wisconsin, and I think it will be Northwestern. Uh, they do have to go to Evanston to play Wis- or to play Wisconsin to play Northwestern on the road. It is their toughest road game to finish out the season they do have a road game against Purdue later but um, this comes two weeks after they have to face Iowa on the road and then a week after Nebraska so it could be a team that's I don't know if they'd be looking past Northwestern because that stretch of three games will probably be the three best teams beside Wisconsin in the Big Ten West so I don't think they can overlook any of those games but at the same time you you also got to figure that um, Northwestern will be the game that they're thinking least about throughout that stretch. Northwestern, a very tough team to beat at home. Granted, a team that seems to get worse a lot of the times as the season goes along. Or not get worse, but at least regress a little bit. It seems like they always come out of the gates firing. And Clayton Thorson will return for another year at Northwestern. So um, it will probably be a pretty good Northwestern team again this year. Uh, they've been a team to be reckoned with for the last two, three years. So... Um, Again, a game you just can't look past. So my biggest game is the Iowa Hawkeyes. Like I said, the game that decided the Big Ten West last year and an Iowa team that's definitely going to be good again this year. Uh, they returned C.J. Beathard. They returned Jordan Kanzari. They returned Des King. I've mentioned these names a lot. They return a lot of players um, from last year's Big Ten West championship team. Now, Wisconsin only lost by, again, four points last year. It was a very close game. If Wisconsin's offense can be at least a little bit more effective this year, uh, that'll be a different game. Iowa played a lot of close games last year, and I think Wisconsin's very close to getting over that hump. This is going to be, in my opinion, the deciding game for the Big Ten West. I do think Northwestern and Nebraska will have something to say in who wins, but I do think it's a two-team race right now at the top between Wisconsin and Iowa, similar to last year. Northwestern was up there too, but anyway, get into my record prediction for Wisconsin. I see a 10 and four season coming up. If you saw my big 10 West predictions and you saw that I actually had them winning the big 10 West, even with a tough schedule, I think it's Wisconsin's year. I know a lot of people are going to be dumbfounded or maybe pissed off by this, especially if you're an Iowa fan or a Nebraska fan, but Looking up and down their schedule, LSU is a tough way to start the season, but then the next two games after that are very winnable in Akron and Georgia State. Um, They do have to face the three best teams from the Big Ten East, which is obviously their biggest obstacle to overcome. But I still do think this, uh, shoot me for saying this, but I feel like this is Wisconsin's division to lose. I think Iowa last year was kind of a Cinderella story. I think it's going to be a little bit different for them with the target on their backs. I think Wisconsin's used to being the favorite out of this division. I do think this season's going to include a Big Ten championship loss and probably a bowl win, and Wisconsin's normally all right in bowl games. They beat USC last year uh, to finish, to cap off a 10-3 and season. So I think it will be a similar season record-wise, and I think Paul Chris' second year at Wisconsin will be a very successful one um, in getting them back to the Big Ten championship game. So that pretty much does it. I will be coming back later with the team I actually just talked about, USC, and then UCLA also later today. So I've got a long day of videos coming up, but that's pretty much it. See ya.